G'day, it's you from your movie Futures, and today we're reviewing something pretty special. Whoa! I've had to reshoot this scene because this thing is so amazing. It's the Armiton F1 pod. So I am in love with this quad. Uh, it is an absolute beast. So uh, this is a DIY kit that we're going to review. Uh, we'll stick it on the bench. I'll show you how it comes, and we'll go We'll talk about it. Let's check it out. You're going to love it. Alright, so this is how the kit's going to come in this big bag just here, and I can already tell I'm really excited. Look at this, a lollipop! Woo! So, alright, let's see what we get inside this big bag. Alright, so this is what you get in the pack. Uh, this is their DIY kit, so everything you need to get up and flying, minus the FPV gear and the receiver. There's so much here to go over, so I'll do a quick overview, and then we'll talk about each, each piece in detail. So, here's a sticker, which is always nice. Um... You get your frame just here, uh, you get some ESCs and four motors as well, so four ESCs, four motors. Uh, here's something I'm really excited about, look at this, this is their flight controller which is built in just here, so I cannot wait to actually check this thing out. Um, you get your header pins and stuff like that, some props which is nice, uh, some solder, some zip ties and of course your dumb dumb lollipop. And because there's so much in this kit, I'm going to break it down so you're going to be able to watch uh, any of these parts just by clicking on some of these links that'll take you directly to this part in the video. So first things first, let's get this bag open and check out what the frame looks like. Alright, so I've unpacked the frame and I've got to say, first impressions, this thing is looking pretty cool. So here's what you get inside the frame package itself and we'll, we will go through this in more detail as well. So we've got all our nuts and bolts and things like that over here, uh, an LED ring and a Velcro strap, so they're the pretty standard stuff from an XT60 connector. Now right here, we've got the mounting section for our camera that's going to mount to our sort of base plate that'll be in here. So we've got our base plate just here, our, this is sort of, I guess you'd call it the top bottom plate, I'm not sure what to call that, but that's the built-in flight control and we'll go through that as well a bit later on. And then we've got some arms just here and I'm really excited to talk about those as well. So to start off, this is our bottom plate that goes underneath the armature, and this is where the battery will strap to underneath here. And you can see here, it's got your 36 by 36 millimeter little standoff holes just here. Um, and if we just look at this, it's 1.5 mils thick. Uh, and that's pretty standard for a base plate, but you don't need to worry about breaking that because uh, it connects to these, these bad boys. So let's talk about these arms, because these are fantastic. All right, so this part I'm really excited about. These are probably the most high-tech arms I have seen so far. So you're gonna say, Stu, what's so special about these? Well, besides looking extremely cool, look how thick these things are. So you can you can take a guess now. All right, let's see, uh, let's see who, who comes up with the magic number. And five mils thick. So we have five millimeter thick carbon arms and they've been milled out a little bit just here as well. So they're going to save a little bit on weight and allow your screws to go through, which is always handy. Um, so yeah, these are fantastic looking arms, really, really strong. I highly doubt anybody's going to break these. If you do, please send me a picture because I'd be uh, interested to see the carnage. They're made for 2200 motors and they're the ones that come with this kit anyway. All right, and each individual arm that weighs 16 grams. So that's pretty light, I think, for a five millimeter arm. I still can't get over that. Five millimeters on this little pod. It's gonna be fantastic. All right, so here is the confusing looking, but totally awesome pod part. So this all goes together to look something like this. Thank you, editing. Uh, and you can see it's a really cool, well-functioning design. So these two plates just here, they're going to hold your FPV camera and they will mount to these two brackets just here, which will be on either side. Once all that section's complete, that will mount uh, to this base plate just here to finish up the pod. And you put it together with all these little screws and nuts and bolts and things like that. Um, you can run LEDs in the back of this uh, section just here, or if you don't want to run LEDs, they also give you an option for a back plate just here as well. So the choice is totally yours. It's nice they include those little things and then you've got all the little nuts and bolts to go with it so it's probably easier to talk about the little bits of the pod when it's all made up like this uh, so you can see just here this is the part that houses your FPV camera and specifically the HS117 and if you loosen it's got two little cool features here if you just loosen these it you can slide it up and down so you can have up to a 90 degree tilt when you're racing on these things which is insane a little space this is where your LEDs will mount on the back just there if you want to use them 
Now, as well as allowing for some crazy angles, it's also really easy to move and tighten, so you don't have to mess around with little screwdrivers or anything like that. You can actually use your fingers, thanks to these big screws just here. Uh, the carbon thickness, in terms of the HS117 housing, that is, th that is three millimeters thick, and the same, I guess, with the bottom bracket just here. It's got some really clever designs, the way it sits in here. All these holes have been recessed as well, so your little nuts screw completely down inside here, which is fantastic, it looks really cool. And I've got to say, just looking at this, this is expertly made. The way this has been milled and uh, cut out is fantastic. Uh, I'm getting very excited about putting this together, it's gonna to be fantastic. You've got some holes just here, and this is where you can mount using this little uh, nut that comes with it, your FPV antennas, so you can mount that through there, the SMA or RPSMA plugs just here. So this is a really strong, tough little pod that's going to protect your camera quite well in here, even in the harshest of crashes, because I expect this thing to be going fast, really, really fast. All right, this quad took an absolute frontal hammering into a big rock just here, and the only scruff that happened just here, this carbon fiber protected the lens of the camera perfectly, so uh, I was very impressed with its durability. The great thing too, in a massive impact, this pod part is going to slide and give, have a little bit of give, so it's gonna take a lot of the impact and still remain very strong. So this is the whole frame assembled just here, and there's some really clever design features going on. So you've got the top little section of the pod, and then you've got the bottom half. Um, and it's got a really strong design here. So these screws go all the way through into these standoffs which hold the pot on here. So this is gonna be really, really strong. I love the way that these all these little screws have been recessed as well. So they're gonna sit nice and flush against the carbon. So it's gonna look fantastic. From the underside, you can see it's gonna be a really clean build just here and the little XT60 connector will pop in just here. The wiring's gonna be kept to an absolute minimum because of the clever design of these ESC placements just here. So you're gonna have your ESCs running just here from your motors and there'll be barely any wires going off into here because then that goes directly to your flight controller. So I've got to say overall, this is probably the coolest looking quad that I have ever built. I'm absolutely in love with it already and I haven't even finished it just yet. All right, so we'll talk about the PDB and then we'll talk about the flight controller. So straight off the bat, you can just connect your LiPo here and that can be three to 6S, that's totally fine. So if you're flying this on 6S, you're a little bit insane, but good luck. Um, you've got your ESC connections just here, your positives and negatives and your grounds and signals just as well. So they're gonna make for some really short distances here on your ESC wires. And these are all directly traced down here to your motors on your flight controller. You've got some little terminals here, some uh, grounds and positives just here, and that will run whatever uh, voltage LiPo that you put in here, so that's what this direct current will be just here. Speaking of the flight controller, uh, it's just like the standard Naze uh, 32 Rev 5, but with some different little additions and things moved around. So you can connect it to your computer just like normal with a micro USB just here. So just here you've got your channels and on the normal Naze 32 you've got uh, actually some little pads on the top and the bottom and these guys have gone with these little pins just here to stop the pads pulling off and also so they can integrate it into this PDB. Um, over this side this is where you've got your motor and ESC connections just here and these trace to each one of the corresponding arms just here. You've also got a little 3 volt output just here which can be useful for some uh, satellite receivers and things like that if you want to fly those. You can flash beta flight onto this flight controller and that's definitely what I'm going to be doing. There's also a black box recorder on this flight controller as well, which is inbuilt, which is fantastic that you don't see on a normal NAS. Now, one thing to mention, you will need to rotate this board 270 degrees in a base flight, clean flight or beta flight or whatever you're using because uh, they've got this set at a different orientation. And the reason they've done that, because this is going to be the front of my quad up here, the reason that's moved here is just for reliability issues. So these traces they've kept here running from this side of the board are as short as possible. But all in all, this PDB with a built-in flight controller is going to make a super slick and clean build. So I can't, take, I can't wait to see what it actually looks like. And you can see just here, keeping with the super clean build idea, your XD60 connector will connect straight into the PDB just like this, so you'll have no uh, battery wires hanging around, which is another fantastic addition. Now all these ESC ports just here, they put out a three voltage output, so if you need to power anything off there, you can. And then over here on the receiver panels, they just here, the positive and negative of, this, of these eight channels just here, they will put out five volts. So if you need to power your receiver, you can do that straight off here as well. Overall, fantastically designed little PDB, keeps it really clean and simple, uh, and has some great ideas about how to power the board and how to power your components, as well as taking uh, huge voltages from three to six S.
All right, next we're going to talk about the motors that come in this DYI kit. So in this one, I've got the Armaton 2204 uh, 2300 OEM motors, and they're fantastic looking little motors. They come with uh, some long wire leads here, even though we're going to cut ours really short. It's always nice to have this option. I'll just unravel it and show you just how long they are. So you've got quite a lot of room to play with if you wanted to use these motors in other builds, but yeah, we're going to keep them very short. Uh, they come with these little lock nuts on the top, but I wish that they actually came with some of the nylon lock nuts. That'd be even better, so I'm going to replace these top nuts just there. Because they're a 2204 motor, they're going to be great at running uh, 5 and 6 inch props because they've got a lot more grunt in them as well. So they, I'm definitely going to be running uh, some 5 inch bullnose props on these and that's what the kit came with. And I'm also just noticing just here on the bottom, they look as well as being really well made and a really high quality motor. You've got plenty of room just here to screw it to your frame because quite often sometimes people have problem where they screw their motor in just here and it will uh, the screw will touch the wires in there and cause a short. But just looking here, there's plenty of room in here. So you've got a lot of leeway so you're not going to have any shorts when you're screwing it to your frame. So I can't wait to put these motors on here. They're going to be an absolute beast, especially when combined with the little ESCs we have. So let's have a look at those. All right, after flying these things, I've got to say, these are the most delicious, beautiful motors I have ever seen. Uh, I've flown with uh, Cobras, RCX, a whole bunch of motors, basically got a whole stack somewhere, I might be able to show you a photo. But these are the best motors I have ever felt or ever flown with. Um, they just feel so smooth and the tolerances in here feel fantastic. And I've got to say, they put out so much power. Just unbelievable grunt uh, when you're pumping out these. And they just feel so good. Buttery smooth motors, so fantastic. Well done, Armiton. Super impressed with these motors, absolutely. All right, and the ESCs that come in this kit are the famous Little Bs. So they're using the fantastic Little B ESCs, and these are the 20 amp version. Uh, these are fantastic ESCs. They're light, they're small, uh, they handle 4S really, really well, and they work great with their mo with higher motor timings as well. So they're gonna be fantastic on our motors, and they also play really nicely with Beta Flight and BO Heli. So definitely uh, some awesome ESCs here. I've used a lot of these in the past, and they're my go-to ESC, so I was uh, stoked when they came in this kit. All right, so now let's look at the props that also come in this kit. And it's I wish Armiton included two uh, sets here because I'm pretty sure these props are pretty cheap. And by the time you fork out to get a kit, if you break one of these, you don't want to be grounded. So it'd be nice, or even if Armiton just included one spare of each one. But yeah, two pack, eight props would be my recommendation. Uh, so these are the Gemfan 5046. And I've never heard of 46 uh, before, so that's quite interesting. 46 bullnose. These are going to produce a lot of thrust, and I've got to be honest, I really like the colour, so that's going to be fantastic. It's going to look awesome on our quad. I can't wait to use them. I just wish I had a few more. They look pretty robust, though, just by looking at them just here. But we'll have to find out, see how they hold up in crashes. All right, so I love this little pod to death. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic, but let's talk about some things I think we could improve on to make it even better. All right, so one of the first little improvements would be a different XT60 connector mount. So I had my first XT60 soldered directly into here, which was pretty awesome. It seemed really tight and compact. But then in one of the crashes I had where the battery got ripped off, the XT60 connector, it half snapped just here about where it bent over the carbon. So for a future improvement, I think they could take this bottom plate that's on here and just in this section just here, have a little cutout where the XT60 can slide in there and then into the top PDB uh, that would make it even stronger. So a little bit of a protection plate around there to stop it snapping off left or right. I think that'd make it a lot stronger. Another improvement with the PDB just here, uh, I think they should just extend this just one millimeter a little bit longer so it doesn't snap off the USB port just in here. It's probably very unlikely to happen, but if there is an extra vision, it'd be great if that just came out just a little bit. So you're not gonna clip your PDB down that way and make it a little bit stronger. Another thing that happened, my Velcro strap broke. And when this broke, this was a massive pain because it's held in underneath all these screws in here. So it's not very simple replacing these Velcro straps. So please Armiton, let's switch this out to some stronger thicker ones especially when they're being when they're holding on the battery on the bottom of your craft uh, so this one's broke and I had to switch it out to one of these ones uh, because this is a rubberized one and it's a bit thicker as well so uh, maybe on these little pods armaton we could have some more heavy-duty battery straps that would also improve this whole kit 
And when I was building, uh, I was really impressed with just how these arms came together so nicely underneath this bottom plate. And there's actually quite a little bit of space in there. So uh, if you're skilled enough, and I can see some people making use of it, the space between this plate and the uh, PDB, there's probably just enough room in there for a receiver. So uh, maybe if Armiton could think a little bit about that and make this square just here a little bit bigger underneath where the plate sit to fit in something like a D4R2 as long as it take, doesn't take away too much strength from the whole quad too much structural integrity uh, that would be a great place for a receiver so uh, maybe that's something for Armiton to think about in future vi future uh, designs I did find these little button heads a little difficult to put on in this prototype version of the build but I believe that's been changed and they've been made a lot easier and they fit a lot better now in the current versions and another thing I want to talk about is just these two little bolts just here. This little carbon fiber plate just gets in the way of you putting the bolts in here easily. So maybe if they could just mill that out just ever so slightly so the top of the bolts could uh, go in there easily without you sort of having to jam them in before they get in there freely because the top of the bolt, just the head part, clips this little bit of carbon fiber. So I know this is here for strength, uh, but maybe just the smallest amount, maybe one or two mils, just off this little side bit here and uh, where each of these bolts are underneath it. Uh, that'll make it a bit easy to get the pod on and off when you've got to unscrew all these. These front ones are fine and the back one is just the ones here underneath this semicircle, so maybe they could change that. All right, and another thing that could make this kit even better, they could maybe switch out the Armiton motors, come with these sort of little tops just here, but let's put in some of these nylon lock nuts. As well as being lighter, they're gonna, uh, you won't have to tighten them down quite as hard and they'll lock into place so they won't come loose. So that'd be to make the kit even better. All right, now this next idea, this is just sort of how I'm feeling. Now I love this frame and I think it looks fantastic, but I'm a bit of a nutcase and I think, right, what's the biggest prop we can run on here? And we can actually spin a six inch prop on the front. It can't, it's made to run five inch props. So we can spin a six inch prop on the on the front, but we can't do that on the back because it clips into this little uh, VTX antenna holder just here. So I would say, let's move this VTX antenna to the back. Maybe if you extend the arms just ever so slightly, you could actually run a six inch version on this and uh, because you don't really need to change too much to be able to run six inch. Yeah, that's close. Maybe move this out five mil, but that's all it's going to take because I want to run the biggest props on the smallest frame. Now the DIY kits come with little b ESCs and they are fantastic. I love those ESCs, but I had to switch mine over the other way, sort of flip them so the positives and the negatives lined up here. Not a big issue, but maybe it'd be great if they could swap these pads around. So negatives and positives were switched directions. So this was the negative and this was the positive in future revisions. The overall manufacturing of this frame was fantastic. The tolerances are really tight. Everything went together really, really well, except for these button heads. They were the only things I had issues with. But everything else fitted so nicely, and it was an absolute pleasure to build. So that was fantastic. So that's my review of the Armiton pod, and I've got to say, this is probably one of the most beautiful and well-crafted machines that I've ever built and flown. Can absolutely recommend this for anyone who's serious about racing. So if you're after a powerhouse of a machine, this is definitely the one for you. Uh, you're going to love it. Uh, I'm going to leave you with some flight footage of this thing just floating around and uh, having fun out when I was camping. For more FPV related content, subscribe. And as always, happy flying. You have no idea how hot and windy it was in uh, the Australian outback here. Everything was so dry. It was about 40 degrees. I'm pretty sure I'll probably make an update video of it. But uh, yeah, so this is out over this, it's meant to be a lake, but it's pretty much all just dry. You can see there's zero water in it. Anyway, happy flying guys.